So we'll have a play a replay. Um, all right, so Yusuf is gonna be talking to us today about healthy stressing and how to define our physical, mental, and emotional health journey, where we currently are and what it looks like to claim what's next. And he'll share some mindset tips and like some balance and well-being and when the stress and work is coming at you fast. And we'll talk, he'll talk about how to get yourself through diffusing some undesired habits and a little bit about Yusuf. Um, shameless plug, Yusuf is my cousin, but um, well, I'm his cousin. And um, he is really um, one of my sounding boards when it comes to my mental and emotional health. Um, and really someone I truly view as a role model as far as caring for your body, caring for your mind, caring for your emotions. And so I'm so excited that he's going to be talking to us today. And I feel like uh, watching him, like we've known each other forever, but like watching him grow, especially in graduate school and really taking like full ownership of that. I just feel like he mastered it in a way that uh, I couldn't imagine anybody else talking about it. So I love you, but Aww. I'm really looking forward to you um, sharing and, and just helping us get it together, okay? Because yes. get it. I've been working out, trying to right. get it together, but I have not been meditating the way I need to. So mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. with that, I, uh, do you want to do your um, questions throughout the session? Um, let's save them to the end. I'm, I'm, I have it broken up in a couple of different sections. I'm going to just go through it. Please ask questions. Please ask questions. And I'm going to try to go through it as quickly as I can so that um, there can be some interaction in the experience as far as questions are concerned. Awesome. Awesome. And pre, uh, people already know about you, Yusuf. Uh oh. Sarah, Yusuf's Black and in the Grad School episode was life affirming. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yes, I am happy. I was like, literally love that episode. Um, all right, I'm gonna let you go ahead and get started. I'm gonna moderate the questions. I'll just keep track of them in case they get lost in the chat. Great. And as you all know, we'll have a giveaway at the end and then we'll do some Q&A. And I should share my screen, yeah? Please, and I'm gonna stop my video and mute. Great, okay. So hey, y'all, uh, let me get this PowerPoint up. Can anybody give me a thumbs up? Well, everybody's video off. I hope y'all can, can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so, uh, as Lante said, a little bit about myself um, and why I even am interested in talking about something like this is that I have uh, been on the, I was on a health journey of losing over 100 pounds. Um, I currently live in Santa Maria, California, and I am a resident artist, um, teaching instructor, and a company member here at a conservatory. And um, I am an actor, a singer, a dancer. Um, I own a business in body awareness and emotional intelligence. And I also own a business in global health and wellness. And so my journey started about six years ago. Um, I was 283 pounds. Um, I was getting ready to graduate with my bachelor's in musical theater. And a really hard, I hit a really hard wall in my life. Um, I didn't know physically what was happening with my body. I didn't know how to maintain, change, grow. Like I was just lost, truthfully. And I um, was struggling and asking and asking and asking about how to make it through stuff like this and how to not let this be the end of my story, which I really want everybody to understand as I share this is that we as human beings are in a constant state of becoming. Um, and I want that to be on at the forefront of everybody's mind as I share this information because it can feel like you are supposed to know all of these things. Um, it can feel like um, like you should have this figured out by now, or you shouldn't have these kind of problems, or why do certain people have these problems and other people don't have these problems? Um, and I can tell you that you got to give yourself a break. You've got to give yourself a break. And not only a break, but a huge break. Um, and realize that the questions are exactly how the solution is found. And so embrace all of them, ask all of them, and never be afraid or feel that any question is too out of the blue or too ungrounded in whatever. No, just ask the question and always move forward. So uh, this information about healthy stressing came to me in about the last the second to last year of my graduate school education, I was pursuing my master's of fine arts in acting at Southern Methodist University, which is a three-year program that has about eight actors every other year. And it was about my second year in the program when I really hit a wall in my 100-pound journey. Um, I had lost about 70 pounds or so. 
um, kind of sort of eating better, kind of sort of treating, treating myself well, kind of sort of taking care of myself. It was really kind of on, kind of off situation, practicing bad habits, poor habits, things that I've heard things about, but not really known for myself. Um, and so I was slumming it, you know, I didn't really have anything to turn to or something to look at. But what was different in grad school was that I was hit with a another tier of stress and demand that I was not familiar with. Um, before I started losing all that weight, my body was really adapting to how I was raised, what my family knew, what my community was all about. And then once I got into this, this additional chapter of higher learning, the, the game kind of changed because no one was really talking about being healthy in your body. No one was really talking about how to maintain those things. They just wanted you to get your work done and get it done well and um, don't make too much noise about it. You know what I mean? And so there's a little bit of sweep under the rug when it comes to how to be healthy and safe and loving within circumstances like that. Um, so that's why, that's what I wanted to share because it was that moment in time where I was like, I have to figure out how not to lose my mind and my body and embrace the fact that what I'm doing right now is mighty stressful. Okay. Um, so one thing that I want to share is, yeah, first you got to give yourself a break and remember that we are up against a lot of momentum when it comes to healthy habits and unhealthy habits when encountering stress, physical, mental, emotional, and environmental tendencies, because you got to, got to understand that when you decide to take your health seriously, your environment may or may not be on that same page. And that has to be something that you are okay with or that you can learn to be okay with. Um, because without it, you, you tend to get swept into the tide of what is generally okay and what is generally accepted. And when you start to make a shift into wanting to be healthy while stress is occurring, people aren't going to want to come with you. You know, and I think that that's important to understand that as you break out into this world, you're going to be a trailblazer. When you try to, when you talk about staying healthy while stress is going on, you're, you're going to be a trailblazer because most people are allowing um, unrecognized habits to wash their healthy habits out of the way because of the such high stakes. Um, one thing I'm really going to be focusing on is emotional eating because it is one of the biggest under-recognized problems with our physical well-being in this world because we all the time are encountering emotional experiences, emotional habits, emotional responses from the news that we watch, from the things we see on the street, from the things our friends and family say to us that really puts us in a place where our body responds and it needs something in order to dull that down and relax into something different. Um, these are just a couple different stats about what is going on with the with Americans and their bodies as far as weight is concerned, and also just as far as what is triggered um, and what it triggers emotional eating. In men, um, it's usually triggered by undesired emotions such as rejection and boredom and less likely to be followed by guilt because of the patriotic society we live in. It's a little bit more accept acceptable for men to send their bodies down the drain and men are a little bit more willing to send their bodies down the drain, um, which is something that I was up against for a long time because when you wanna be healthy as a man, that's a rarity. You know, If you wanna be healthy and not be toxic in your masculinity in that way, it's a rarity. You know what I mean? If you don't wanna be in the gym punching people in the chest and ooh and an on and all that kind of stuff, like you're gonna be in the minority for a little while. Um, and in women, it's a lot of times triggered by anxiety followed by guilt because there is a societal blanket on the demand that women look better, that women feel better, that women present themselves in a, in a conditional, aesthetically pleasing way, which again, gives us the opportunity to redefine these things and to break these patterns. But these are just the trends that are currently plaguing and going on in our country at the moment. Uh, let's see, great. So transforming your habits is what I'm really gonna talk about um, because with the thought momentum that we are all in, with our food habits, with our emotional habits, with our stressing habits, um, it takes a bit of transformation in order for those things to become different things, in order for you to release what is not serving you and begin to adapt what you desire. Um, and I say that because this is a deliberate process. 
It's not a process that happens by mistake or happens by, you know, osmosis, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's you actually taking the time to define what you want. And when those moments arise, when you are faced with things that are old habits and things that have taken you down before, um, you got to have a way to redirect it. You got to have a way to address it, feel it, relax into it, soften it, and shift the focus. And I know it sounds like a lot, but once you figure out what those things are for you, it really starts to click and it becomes something that you can turn into. Um, this is something that I have created. Uh, it's a part of my educational programming for body awareness and emotional intelligence. And so I am more than happy to have feedback. Um, in the last page, you'll see all my contact information. And I'm happy to connect on a personal level mm -hmm. with any and all of you about this stuff because this journey and being in conversation about this journey is truly, truly one of my greatest joys, um, no matter who you are or what you're struggling with. And so I hope after this, you feel free to reach out and to say, you know, I want to get specific about my case, or I want to talk about what's in my way, or what are some suggestions, you know, I'm generally going to go over everything, but you can want to be specific as your case goes. So CRDR is clarify, relax, diffuse, and refocus. And so this just gives you a little short little acronym that you can repeat and clear up for yourself in order for you to remind yourself what you're doing. And I say that because this work is intentional, y'all. Like this is not a, it's not a happenstance type situation, but this is a, when stress arise, I want to feel differently. You know, like that has to, it has to be that clear for you. Otherwise, you, the, the momentum of your habits will win the day you know, because you are creating new thought pathways. You are creating new habitual responses to circumstantial events. And so with that, you got to pave the way. You have to till the soil. You have to plant the seeds. You have to water the seeds. You have to cultivate that, which is a process. You know, it's not, it's, you don't bang on the ground when the corn's not coming up overnight. You know what I mean? But you give it love, you pour into it and you allow it to be uh, on its own journey while consciously contributing every step along the way. So going through these, clarify. You wanna get out ahead of it. This is a situation where you have to pre-pave your responses to these situations. Cause you don't wanna, ha you don't wanna wait until there's a knee jerk response happening right in front of you because by the time those knee jerk responses come, it is almost too late if you don't have something in place. And so you wanna get out ahead of it thought wise and emotionally. What are the things you want to feel when an event like that comes up? And decide why it is important that you feel that way. You know, and this is some real, like take a notebook, write these things down for yourself and don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Don't ask nobody to agree with you. Don't, don't ask nobody what, um, what their opinion is. This is a chance for you to begin to develop your own knowing. Um, in a very, very intimate and personal way. And so you decide what you want to feel. Um, and I say feel because that's an unconditional state that you can accomplish. Um, some examples, you want to feel empowered. You want to feel mastery. Mastery was mine and still is. Um, you want to feel fun. You want to feel excited. You want to feel um, in charge. You want to feel at ease. You want, you know, just decide what the feeling is before it happens. Decide why that's important to you. Um, for me, mastery was important because I spent the majority of my life and lack thereof playing catch up. And so the next thing you want to do is be kind, be kind, be kind to yourself in the moment as it happens and also after, no matter what happens, you know, and celebrate every inch of your awareness um, to the umpteenth degree. Like you really wanna celebrate the fact that you are consciously engaged in deliberately making yourself a new person, deciding that your pathways are gonna be different and your thoughts are gonna be different and thus your experience shall be different. Um, so you decide what you wanna feel, you commit to being kind to yourself and you celebrate that awareness. Even if you still pick up the chips, you know what I mean? Or even if you still play the music or don't get the assignment done on time. You celebrate the awareness that you are clarifying what is clear for you. And in order to clarify a lot of things, you got to know what you don't want. That's a part of this is really understanding what is not desired. 
um, it really helps clear up what you do want. Relax. You gotta relax. You gotta find some ease in this process or it will be no fun. <laughs> you wanna find some ease and allow yourself to be in becoming, you know? Remember that you are becoming, remember that you can never get it wrong and remember that this is never done. You know, to, to pretend that I'm done, to pretend that any of us is done is to, imply, is, is to imply finished. And we are not finished in our life experience until we're out of this life experience. And so know that you can start again tomorrow, 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 you, again tomorrow, you know? And even if you only make it till about noon, so the day goes down the drain, um, you can call it a wash, relax, and start again tomorrow and know that you are the author of this story that you are writing. So allow yourself to feel that empowered, um, even if your results aren't necessarily where you wanna be. You know, it's important to know where you don't wanna be so that you do know where you do wanna be. So you clarify and then you relax into it. And so a, a, a moment like this, or a moment where you wanna use relax, or I used to always use relax, is I would go into the store and I'm gonna talk about food because that was my biggest, my biggest triumph. Um, but you would go into, I would go into the store and I would see chips, right? And I would see chips on the rack and I would have to like, and it would be so impulsive for me to just grab the chips, buy them and be out and have them in my mouth before I even think about what they are or why I want them. That I had to find a way to relax into that moment so that another decision can be available. So that I can hear the impulse to maybe just walk past the chips. You know, so that's a moment that I used to use relax and I would use a, a breath cycle. I would use a, a four by four breath cycle, which I can talk about later, um, that really allowed me to key into my body, to key into mastery and to diffuse what my desire was that I did not want at that moment. Diffuse, that's the next one. Um, you wanna develop an internal love language. How do you talk to yourself is monumental. It is so, so important to understand that your love language to yourself is the most important order of the day. How you talk to yourself matters a lot. And again, you cannot get it wrong and it is never done. And so try some stuff out. Try some language out that feels good to you. Try some language out that maybe might work for now, might work later. You know, my language, my love language to myself when I was first starting my journey, to be quite honest, was really, really aggressive. Like I was, I would be yelling at myself, I'd be cussing at myself, you know, but that's what got my gears going. You know what I mean? That's what got me going because I grew up in such a pressure cooked environment between dance and the arts and community and housing and blah, 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 that that amount of pressure is what got me moving. And then there was a shift that happened one day when I heard my internal talk going on and I was like, this is mean. I was like, this is mean. <laughs> I hope y'all laughing. <laughs> but I was like, this is mean. I, I have to, I was like, I need to talk nicer to myself. What, what would it be like if I talked nicer to myself? Does it mean that the first half of my love language was wrong? Absolutely not. Does it mean that I, learned something different along my journey? Absolutely, and that's all that ever matters. And so when you are diffusing, after you've clarified, after you've relaxed into the moment, you wanna put something physical into your practice to diffuse the emotional impulse. So for me, that became doing calf raises, the four by four breath cycle, and that also became doing just doing squats in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? Um, jumping jacks, like something small. I find there's a little pressure point right here in between the thumb and the, what's this, the forefinger? I think it's the forefinger. There's a pressure point right here that I like to use often when I don't want to think about something else and I want to diffuse and allow myself to breathe into my physical body and my being. Um, I use that a lot, but you want to put something physical there because the body can trump the mind, you know? the body has an ability to soften the mind's craziness in a really, really powerful way. Um, I teach voice and dialects to an actor all the time and I, and I use the body as a distraction in order to free the voice because when your body is engaged, it requires that your beingness be present. Your body requires that you be with them 
when you are using your physical apparatus. So I think that that's a huge, huge thing to turn to. And the next thing you want to do is refocus. You want to cultivate a mantra that reminds you of what you want to feel, which for me was mastery. It was mastery. It was focus. It was light. It was buoyant. It was um, energized. Um, it is still all of these things. And in those moments, when you've relaxed, you've diffused the immediacy of the impulse. Like I would sometimes grab the chips, breathe, let the chips go. And then I'd refocus. I'd go, where do I want to be? Mastery. Does this look like mastery? No, let me walk out of the door. And by the time those things happen, you're already cooking with gas. And then you celebrate. You have, oh, Lante, I'm working with this profanity. You have a party. You understand? You have a party every time that you make a decision that is in the direction of what you want. You know, and you don't need nobody to come to your party. You could be in the hallway and scream to the top of your lungs, yes, I didn't eat the chips. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? And people will go, wow, what's going on? And you are celebrating where you want to be, you know, and every inch of that matters and every inch of that is important to do every single time. And again, you cannot get it wrong and it is never done. And Decide, I would take a journal if you could when you're working with stuff like this. And I would put lists of feeling words that can pull your focus, that are a little bit more dominant in your desires and your energy than whatever the things you are trying to combat are. So feeling words like mastery, feeling words like excited, feeling words like enthusiastic, feeling words like encouraged, feeling words like, um, uh-oh, Mac battery low, feeling words like um, thrilling, feeling words, uh, any of those kind of things. Go through and just carve out a few of those and write them on a regular basis so that they can be readily available when moments like that occur. And then again, celebrate what happens no matter what. Even if you don't win the day, even if you do get the chips and you do eat them and they, and, they, and they taste so good, you know what I mean? Like don't berate yourself as you eat the chips, but feel good and then decide what about these chips? And I say chips because chips are still my, like they are my thing, you know what I mean? And you decide what about that action or that activity feels good and see if you can find a way to find that same feeling in a better desired path, in a more desired pathway. You know, and so for me with chips, it's that crunch, you know what I mean? Like that crunch is just forever satisfying to me. And I don't have to get rid of that. I don't have to demean myself for finding satisfaction in a crunch. I just got to find a more healthy crunch. You know what I mean? My crunch can't be, you know, Doritos, but it can be hippie chickpea puffs. It can be some rye grain crackers, you know what I mean? Like, and then when you narrow it down that way, it really starts to diversify your options. And so it's not just potato chips or Lay's, but it becomes the sensation of that crunch. And I also find it when I'm doing crunches too. Do you know what I mean? So there's all kinds of things to turn to. Um, Lante, I'm gonna ask a favor. Absolutely. Can, can we talk through some of these questions? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that I can grab my charger. And before I go to the end, um, we'll just talk through some of these questions. I see the chat's kind of going crazy. Yeah, it's popping, it's popping, it's popping. But we're like enjoying. We're just like Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk, let's let's get through some of these and okay. then I'll close it out with some stuff. So um, I know I definitely, well, let me first read to you. Uh-oh, I think we lost, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, did we lose you? Okay. <laughs> so um, yes, I'm trying to see where we started. All right, some people are just really relating to what you're talking about and the shift in, in uh, Miss P is literally going through that shift right now. Mm -hmm. um, really loving the idea of celebrating oneself. It was Lindsay was saying that she loved to celebrate yourself. That's right. And I think yes. that we always kind of go into treating ourselves, but just celebrating in itself is a treat. So I, I really like right. that. Um, Miss P, she's so sweet. She said this pre presentation has her tearing up and that oh. you all are black excellence and we out here saving lives. That just yes, yes, we are, Miss P. <laughs> so yes, so we awesome. is. Um, and Brianna is agreeing and, you know, um, in agreement with Miss P and 
I just, it's just, it's awesome. And I've been going ham on my tweets, but one thing that you mentioned um, is definitely this four by four breath. What is that? We don't, I don't know what that is. So the four by four breath is, let's try to do it right now. So everybody find yourself in a nice, comfortable position. Y'all ain't know this is going to be interactive. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Find yourself in a nice, comfortable position. See if you can rest your hands wherever they are. And see if you can, you know, settle yourself into your seat, into your chair. Close your eyes. Take your focus inward. And the four by four breath, you're going to inhale for four. You're going to hold for four. And when I say hold, it's going to be a light hold, not a squeeze, not a scrunch, but just a suspension of your breath. So your inhale for four, you suspend for four, you exhale for four, and you leave it out for four. And so you leave your lungs empty for four seconds after you exhale. So let's give it a try. So everybody inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, leave it out, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, suspend, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, leave it out, one, two, three, four. So that's the four by four breath that I engage in anytime I'm in like a high crisis situation. <laughs> wow, that's um, and so you, you allow that to be something that you turn to. And by the time you go through that about two or three times, the desire immediately becomes a little bit less in focus because your body is more in focus. You know, and that's what I mean when I say the body can trump the mind. If you begin to start engaging your physical apparatus, your mental desires begin to take a back seat uh, because those are just thought patterns that are just like wired together that are just happening because of habit. But your physical body is something that immediately engages you in the present moment, immediately introduces you into being right here in this chair in this outside in california wherever you are and allows you to be in this room and that's something that can truly be empower empowering in those moments when you don't know what to do or you're sick of not being able to control what you're doing does that make sense absolutely sorry yes I'm Excellent. my head up and down yes yes <laughs> Okay, um, any other questions before I move on a little bit? I don't see any questions in here, so if you wanna keep going, feel free. Okay, here we go. All right, let me move this back over. Um, you can still see it, yeah? Yes, sir. Great, so you, re so you clarify, um, you relax, you diffuse, and you refocus. You clarify, you get out of, ahead of it, you get out ahead of what you want, you get out ahead of what you desire. When you come into those knee-jerk responses like the smell of chicken, Lord, before I went vegan, y'all, that was, that was some, I was like, this is some other world type stuff when I, when I was trying to weave it out of my life because like there was an actual, like my blood would begin to pump in a way that I was like, I feel out of control. I was like, I feel like, I am like clicked into this like universal consciousness in which I must consume such thing, you know? And in that moment, I had to find a way to A, get out ahead of it, B, when those moments come, relax the tension, get mad and begin to react. And then I had to diffuse them, usually physically, all the time with the breath. That's the first, I teach breath and I teach meditation. And that's the first thing that I always tell my students to ask themselves is, are you breathing? Anytime you're in question about where your focus should be, just ask yourself, am I breathing right now? You know, and that'll bring your focus into your own being, into your own present moment, into your own sense of ease that's available at all times. Um, so this next slide talks a little bit about, oh, that's the, no, that's not. 
There we go. So your toolkit, these are a couple pictures of my journey. Um, this one here is, uh, I don't remember when it was, but I was in a car visiting home. And this one was in an Uber in Dallas, Texas, um, a year after I, like the fall when I had lost my hundred pounds. This was somewhere around, I want to say 2012, 2013. And this was around my third year in grad school when I was working on Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Um, just to give you an example of the scale with which I'm talking about this transformation stuff. Sorry, it's a bug in my face. Um, the scale that I'm talking about is really something that with deliberate conscious effort on a regular basis, gentle, soft, kind, deliberate effort on a daily basis, those kind of thoughts accumulate over time. Um, and because my journey happened in such a drastic way and I sort of lost my emotional place in the room, which is why I decided to start this company about educational programming and body awareness and emotional intelligence, because I was all of a sudden, this guy over here was being addressed as he looks, but inside those ears was this guy here, you know? And so it's important to understand that you are cellularly, mentally, and experientially creating a new person. You are deciding to be a new being. And that's important, you know what I mean? Like you wanna be soft about who you think you're supposed to be. You wanna be general enough that your becoming has room to come in. You know, if you have such hard and, hard and conflicting ideas about who you think you're supposed to be in this world, it makes it really hard for the becoming of you to find a place at the table, to find a seat at your boardroom of this change, you know? Um, so you want to be soft about those things. You want to find a healthy system to turn to. What do you turn to um, for your daily eating? What do you turn to for your meal plans and stuff like that? I, I became a health coach after I took a, I did a 30-day nutritional rebalance program with this brand called Arbon International. And now I teach this stuff on a regular basis, um, which is actually the greatest gift I could have ever asked for. Um, because nobody was around to teach me when I was slumming them things like this here. Um, nobody had the courage or the tools to impede my momentum and say, hey, you might want to look at something differently, you know, and I had no system for success. And so it's such a gift to be able to pay those things forward um, in a big, big way. And so you want to find a place to sweat and refocus on a regular basis every day and be okay with it every day. <laughs> um, because the natural, the body wants to sweat. There's a, there's a natural level of toxicity that happens in the body because of the world we live in and the food that we have already consumed over the past you know, decade and a half. We have to understand that the FDA and the people that run this country and design the country that we live in do not have our best health in interest. Um, they profit if we stay sick. They benefit if we do not get more savvy about how we create the bodies that we live in. They just do. And so it's important to sweat. It is, you know, and I, I would find a way to enjoy it and love it and see how sweaty you can get. You know what I mean? Like there, there can be a heavy stigma around it because, you know, people, oh, you're sweaty. Oh, you're sweaty, you know. But yeah, I'm sweaty and that's good because better out than in, you know what I mean? And the body feels good. It's a natural exfoliant. Like there are so many beneficial qualities just to sweat mentally and physically. Um, you want to find a support system if you can. I was lucky enough and still am lucky enough to have people that they may not have been doing what I was doing, but they didn't nail like they didn't knock my dreams out of the sky. You know what I mean? Like they said, you know, do you do what you want to do. We won't do it, but you go ahead and do your thing, you know, which is important, you know, that that is some kind of support. But if you find somebody or a team, which I'm more than happy to be for any of you, if you're looking for somebody to support you in your journey, um, it's important to have somebody to encourage you to go sweat today, to drink enough water today, you know, um, and everybody can almost double their water intake. Speaking of water, my mouth is kind of dry. I'm going to take a little sip really quick. Lordy, Lordy, Lord. Okay, so find something to reset your health. And so, as I was saying about the level of toxicity that's in the body, 
you, it behooves you to find something to help you detoxify those things because you're working with clogged pipes if you don't. When I was on my weight loss journey and I went from 283 to about like 235 or something like that, I, um, there was a, a level of toxicity that went from being in a big person to being toxic, to being a toxically dense, small person. And there was nothing I could do to change that besides rebalance my nutritional and toxicity levels in my body because it's clearing the gunk out of the gears. It's cleaning the pipes. It's cleaning the microbiome in the intestines so that your nutrient absorption is effective. Because if you have a, a highly toxic body, which most of us do because just because of this world, you know what I mean? If you have a highly toxic body, your body overproduces fat cells to protect itself from those toxins, to protect the vital organs from the high level of toxicity that's in your body. And so you wanna find something that helps you reset that because otherwise your body is going to be stuck in that cycle. And I had reached the point where no matter how much sweating I did, the weight was not gonna fall because my body was just chaotic with so many toxic chemicals. And so you wanna find something to reset your health and you wanna develop something physical at home. You wanna find a physical way to enjoy your body every single day. Whether that be rolling around in the bed, whether that be rolling around outside, whether that be doing a couple yoga poses outside in the morning, um, whatever it is, you wanna find something that you lay hands on your body so that your body knows that you are here for it and that you are loving it. And this applies to stress because the first thing that starts to get chaotic when stress hits is the mind and the body. The mind starts to go crazy and the body begins to respond to the mind. But if your body is invested and already in momentum, in ease and love and flexibility, your mind will begin to take notes from your body. Your mind will begin to say, maybe I can be more flexible. Your mind will begin to say, if my body is strong enough, maybe I'm strong enough. Those kind of thought pathways begin to become extremely, extremely useful. Um, great. And so where to connect and to further your journey. These are a couple pictures of me um, since I've lost the weight and since I've uh, taken my health journey and my coaching seriously um this is my instagram my podcast instagram page my facebook page my email my phone number don't be passing that out but everybody on this call is more than welcome to shoot me a text just tell me where we met and where you came from and i'm happy to talk to you about this and this is also my arbon website because the third the program that i coach is a 30-day nutritional rebalance program and it is the only system that i have found that has put my body in an effective functional clean way um, to best serve the functionality of my body. Um, my sleep has gotten tremendously better. My mood, y'all, the mood lives in the gut. The immune system lives in the gut. And you gotta clean that stuff up. You gotta clean that stuff up. Because if not, your body's just going to begin to cycle what's already going on. And that's not something you can avoid to continue if you want to change. If you want to have a different response to stress and high stakes, when someone's like, "Alrighty, I need two songs by next week. If you don't want your body to go into panic mode, your gut has to be in line, your immune system has to be in line because all of those things are connected to your experience and they create and define how you experience it, you know? And so if you're interested in more about the Nutritional Rebalancing Program, I'm more than happy to talk with anybody after this. Um, and please shoot me an email or my phone number. I'll leave that up for a little bit. Um, and it is something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So I am, <laughs> even if now is not the time for you, uh, it's important to know that these journeys and this process is always available and always something that myself, I can't speak for everybody else, but I am always going to be on the table to talk about. Um, so. With that, um, anybody want to ask some questions? Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then put some of those things up in the chat box. Yeah, so drop them, while you're dropping them in the chat and people are thinking on your questions, because you know, Yusuf, I always have a bunch of questions. I'm going to share my screen with you all for a second for our giveaway. All right, let's see. Let me go to my keyboard. Oops. 
Okay, can y'all see my keyboard? Yusuf, can you see it? Yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so it's time for the giveaway, per the huge. Um, what I'm giving away, this 90 minute goal setting session, planning session, I've told you all about it. If you are new, what we're gonna do is spend uh, 90 minutes together and talk about what your goals are. So let's include a goal about creating a new practice about your physical body. I think that's gonna be really important. Typically, we do cover something like that when I'm talking with those who I've had these sessions with before. We pick one goal and it's usually, usually something related to your health or your physical wellness. And so maybe we can start talking about creating better practices for creating a new habit when you relate to stress. I know, honestly, emotional eating is something that I need to work on. And so um, if that's something that you feel like you want to work on, we would come together and start thinking about and talking through what those strategies might look like for you. And it'll be for the course of the summer, so June and July. And we create a week-by-week -week plan to make progress on whatever it is that you're trying to make progress on, be it in your academic, um, your academic goals and your personal goals. And so, again, even speaking on Yusuf's thoughts and um, notes on making deliberate, intentional progress, but incremental and gentle progress. That's what this is about. It's not this hard line deadline stuff because we're creating a framework that you can reference to and iteratively work through to, to create your progress. And if you need to divert or rearrange your structure or your goals throughout the summer, that's okay. But a part of it is a first just establishing what it is you want to accomplish. And so that's the goal of these sessions. And this is a part of the Scholar Circle, which is the private pre-dissertation support program I've created for graduate students. So if you're a master's student or um, a PhD student and you are um, about to write your thesis, you're still totally fit into this group and so we have live training sessions we have webinars very similar format to these sessions i already have had a couple of sessions that i've created for the spring cycle if you join you would be immediately have access to that library i also released the podcast early so they heard yusuf's episode before anyone else and so they got to rant and rave in our group chat about yes. how amazing that episode was i mean this like and that's not even like no cap like for real um and then we do have these weekly co-working sessions where we can meet and maybe we'll add like a water check to our session check-ins and making sure that we're drinking our water and we're taking care of our bodies. And really the point of this set of this group is to have a really intentional community that you work with and together with to um, really just get through this grad school thing, right? It's hard, it's convoluted, you know, and a lot of times we're only people of color, only women in our program, and so just giving us a space to, to connect. With that, I feel like I was like zooming through that. With that, I'm gonna look at our, look and see who our winner is. And so we've got 24 participants. Can I add something to this? Yeah, absolutely. I wanna add something to the giveaway. Um, okay just because this is my session and I can't. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add this little, there's a, a, a sample kit of some, some skincare that I use. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a full on try me set with like day creams, uh, SPF, face wash, body cream. And it's, it's a really, really fancy, cute little thing. And I'll send that out with whoever wins this. Okay, I was gonna just do two numbers. So you wanna do two giveaways? So your, yours and mine, or you wanna do one for everybody? Is that uh, uh, let's do two, sure. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna generate two random numbers, y'all. Do you, I don't think you all can see the screen, can you? I see winner announcement, that's all I see. Okay, okay, well, I, it's, the numbers, well, okay, we'll do one from the top and one from the bottom. So Yusuf, which way do you wanna start, from the bottom or from the top? From the top. <laughs> all right, from the top. The first number is 17, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> 10, 11, 12, <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Shayna! Shayna already won! Okay. <laughs> sorry, Shayna. You can't win twice. Um, <laughs> sorry, Shayna. Star, you won the uh, Yusuf's gift of the skincare. So you're about to get your skin. Okay, look, Yusuf got some nice skin. So you Thank are you. winning. And I will connect you to via email, okay? Great. All right, and then the second number is seven. So I'm gonna start from the bottom this time. So you do it from the top. 
Rainice? Yeah, Renice, Renice, you won. You won the session, 90-minute session. So I will follow up with everybody via email. I know I still owe everyone from yesterday who won um, an email too, so I'm going to get that out to you all tonight so we can schedule our time together. Um, and with that, let's jump right back over to these questions because we have about five more minutes. So, um, okay. Let's see. Oh, we have a lot of messages. All right. Um, used to be push information. Um, someone, Miss Peace's awesome presentation. I agree. How do we become more calm if we're an anxious person? How do we become more calm if we're yeah. an anxious person? And let's try and do like uh, one minute answers because we have a, some good questions in here. I will. Um, first, you change the story. Don't call yourself an anxious person. Um, call yourself becoming a calmer person. You get really general about where you want to go. And every time that comes up, you say to yourself, um, all things come in time. I'm getting better at this. I don't have to figure this out at once. But you redirect those thoughts and listen to that language. That language right there is the first red flag. You know, when you identify your, that would be like me calling myself a fat person. You know what I mean? If it's, as long as I keep that story going, that is the story that will continue to unfold. Beautiful. What are some good sources to learn about nutrition? I want to learn how to make healthy meals in a budget, but different resources have contrasting information. Um, a good, it depends on what your goals are. If you're looking to eat cleaner, um, a good resource, I can, send, I can send you some of these directly. And so I don't know who it is, but if you email me, I can send you some nutritional resources as far as like where to find foods and general directions to lean. Um, I'm an advocate for plant-based diets only because it's the healthiest way to get it all in. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it also provides you with the most nutrient dense uh, options like by happenstance because you're eating plant-based you are going to run in, into more nutrients do you know what I mean it's just a little bit less variables there so I would say lean towards a plant-based diet you can still do your meats and your your greens and your grass-fed beef and all that kind of stuff but you want to limit those kind of things and start to trade in your breads for your greens your starches for your grains, you know what I mean? And just start to soften all those kind of things. That's what I'd say. But I'm happy to send you personal resources, whoever you are. Yeah, so that was coming from Crystal. Great. And Crystal, um, you might, because uh, I feel like I have more than one Crystal in my email. So I'll check and see if I can easily pull it up. If not, we'll email all the Crystals. It's fine. Because <laughs> 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 I don't want to have to make her put her public, in her public name out here. Um, uh, there was one more question. It's 753, I mean, 757, sorry. And we have one more session, y'all. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited. You used to be an amazing job. Like, you're so fire. I just love you so much. Um, and uh, also my other cousin here. Hey, Andre, we see you. We see you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, can we find out more about the Scholar Circle on your website? Yes. I will drop a link. I know this is so shady, but in the next session, I will drop a link for the Scholar Circle in there. But if you Google, I mean, if you go to blackandandgradschool.com backslash Scholar Circle, the, the landing page will show up and give you a little bit more information about the Scholar Circle. Um, but um, my experience. The program I was in is a great program at Illinois. However, it was not a good fit for me, so I left. That's the quickest way to tell you the story. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna just leave it at that. But I've heard, I know other people who have enjoyed their time at Illinois. I have a lot of friends who have their PhD from Illinois and they've been fine. I'm actually interviewing a friend from U of I next week, and I have an interview with Kelsey Kelly. She got her PhD at Illinois, um, and it's called Tough Mudder Mindset. That's the episode. I don't remember the number, but it was last March-ish, and she's a U of I grad as well. And I'm also interviewing another U of I grad, one of my sorors, who had four kids, was a principal, and got her PhD all at the same time, um, and married, super active, so all that jazz. So I, I know a lot of people who've had a great experience there, um, even though mine was not ideal. Okay, um, I think that's it. Is there anything? Oh, Yusuf, you answered the last question. Yeah, it was about the chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I used the comfort level of the chips. I found out the crunch was the most satisfactory part of them. I found other ways. I eat them not compulsively. That's right. Okay, y'all, we got one minute till the next session starts, so I gotta go. Thank you so much, Yusuf. If you wanna hang around, people can ask you questions, but I'm gonna jump in the next session, okay? Sure, yeah, I'll linger for a few minutes. Okay, bye, guys. <laughs>